Hi. In this presentation, I'll discuss graph-based nearest neighbor search, some algorithms and theoretical insights. Assume that we are given a dataset of n elements in d-dimensional space. Then, for a given query, the goal of the nearest neighbor search is to find the element or several elements closest to the query in the dataset. Nearest neighbor search is widely used in various machine learning tasks, information retrieval, image search, recommendations, and many others. In practice, both the number of elements and the dimension can be large. There are many ways to solve this problem. A naive approach is to scan the whole dataset, measure all distances from the elements to the query, and return the closest element. For one query, such an algorithm has time complexity proportional to n times d, which can be too expensive for large datasets. Several well-known algorithms are based on recursive partitions of the space. For instance, KD trees and random projection trees. The complexity of such algorithms is logarithmic in the number of elements, but is exponential in dimension. Hence, they are especially useful when the dimension is small. When the dimension is large, the problem is often relaxed to approximate nearest neighbor search. And the most well-known algorithmic technique is the locality-sensitive hashing. The main idea is to hash the points such that the probability of collision is higher for closer points. Then one can retrieve near neighbors for a query by hashing it and checking the elements in the same buckets. This approach is well studied theoretically and widely used in practical applications. Recently, graph-based approaches were shown to demonstrate superior performance over other types of algorithms in many large-scale applications of nearest neighbor search. Graph-based methods are based on local search over a proximity graph constructed on the elements of the dataset. In the rest of the presentation, I'll focus on algorithms of this type. Let me describe the main idea of graph-based nearest neighbor search. Recall that we have a database of elements. On these elements, we construct a proximity graph where each node is connected to its nearest neighbors. Then, for a given query queue, we start at some element of the dataset and make greedy steps towards the query on the graph. At each step, we evaluate the neighbors of the current element and pick the one closest to the query. Then we again check the neighbors and make the next step. We proceed until we cannot make any more steps. We may either find the nearest neighbor or get stuck in a local optimum. There are many additional heuristics proposed for improving graph-based algorithms. I will cover some of them using a particular graph-based algorithm called HNSW as an example. I will not describe the full algorithm, but rather give intuition behind the key algorithmic details. One such detail is the multi-layer graph structure. The lowest layer contains all elements. In order to create each next layer, we subsample some fraction of elements from the previous layer. At each layer, we construct a proximity graph. The search starts from the upper layer and greedily traverses the elements until a local minimum is reached. Then, we switch to the lower layer and continue the process from where we stopped. This method reduces the number of steps since the progress is faster at upper layers where the edges are longer. It can be shown that this algorithm has a logarithmic number of steps. Another idea, which is used in many graph-based algorithms, is the so-called graph diversification. In nearest neighbor graphs, each node is connected to several nearest neighbors. However, it is desirable to have edges pointing to different directions. In other words, we may prefer a longer edge if it points to an unoccupied direction. Formally, we do the following. For each node u, we go through the nodes in its neighborhood, starting from the closest one. For the closest node v, we add an edge from u to v. Then we look at the next element w, and we may do or do not add an edge from u to w. We check the following condition. 
whether there exists a neighbor of u which is closer to w than u. If there is such a neighbor, as in our case, then we do not add an edge from u to w. Then we look at the next element t. Since there are no neighbors of u closer to t than u, we add an edge from u to t. This procedure is very natural. We add an edge to an element if we cannot go closer to this element using the edges we currently have. This technique helps to make the neighbors more diverse and thus helps to avoid local optima. Finally, many graph-based algorithms use beam search instead of greedy search. In this case, we maintain a list of several best candidates instead of just one optimal point. This also helps to avoid local optima. Before going deeper into the limits and benefits of graph-based algorithms, it is important to distinguish between two principally different regimes, dense and sparse. To define these regimes, we compare the dimension of the dataset with the logarithm of the number of elements. Assuming the uniform distribution over the d-dimensional unit sphere, in the dense regime, the distance from a given point to its nearest element tends to zero with n. In contrast, in the sparse regime, this distance is about the square root of 2. And actually, the distance between any two elements is about the square root of 2. That is why the exact nearest neighbor search is so difficult in the sparse regime. Actually, the complexity of known exact algorithms scales exponentially in dimension, which is a problem in the sparse regime. Hence, in this regime, the problem is often relaxed to C approximate nearest neighbor, where we are allowed to return any element at distance at most C times larger than the distance to the nearest neighbor. Let me also note that while real-world datasets may have large dimensionality, they usually have lower intrinsic dimension. Fortunately, most graph-based algorithms do not care about the original dimension since edges depend only on distances between the elements. In the reminder of this talk, I'll give more intuitions and some theoretical results regarding the time and space complexity of graph-based algorithms. I'll discuss simple nearest neighbor graphs, the effect of long edges, and the effect of beam search. All theoretical results assume that datasets are uniformly distributed over a d-dimensional sphere. Hence, the neighbors are naturally diversified. So I will not discuss the effect of diversification. The complexity of graph-based algorithms for the uniform distribution was analyzed in the two papers listed on the slide. Let me discuss the nearest neighbor graphs in the dense regime. We assume that each element is connected to its nearest neighbors and the size of the neighborhood is defined by some constant m. If this constant is greater than the square root of 2, then the exact nearest neighbor search based on this graph succeeds with high probability. The number of neighbors of each element is defined by the constant m and grows as m to the power of d. The number of neighbors defines the space complexity and the complexity of one step of the algorithm. To get the final time complexity, we have to multiply the complexity of one step by the number of steps. And the number of steps grows as n to the power of 1 over d. If the dimension is sufficiently small, then the number of steps is larger than the complexity of one step. In this case, it is reasonable to reduce the number of steps using long edges. In the sparse regime, such graph-based algorithms cannot find the exact nearest neighbor in sublinear time. Therefore, the guarantees are given for the C approximate nearest neighbor search. The time complexity grows as n to some power which is smaller than 1 and is defined by the constant C. Interestingly, in the sparse regime on uniform datasets, the algorithm converges in at most two steps with high probability so long edges are not needed. However, in practice, the datasets are not uniform, and many graph-based algorithms add long edges to proximity graphs in order to speed up the search at the early steps of the algorithm. This idea is closely related to the analysis made by Kleinberg 20 years ago, 
In his paper, Klinberg considered a two-dimensional grid and assumed that, in addition to local edges, each node also creates one random long link. The probability of a long link between two elements is assumed to be proportional to the distance between them to the power minus r. Klinberg proved that only if r equals 2, the greedy graph-based search finds the target element in log n squared steps. Any other value gives at least n to some positive power steps. Motivated by this result, we extended it to our setting. Namely, we assume that the points are uniformly distributed over a d-dimensional sphere, and, importantly, we also assume that d tends to infinity. If the probability of an edge between two elements is proportional to the distance between them to the power of minus d, then the number of steps is log n squared. However, plain nearest neighbor graphs give n to the power of 1 over d steps. Hence, reducing the number of steps is reasonable only if d is smaller than log n over 2 log log n. Klinberg's result influenced many graph-based nearest neighbor search algorithms, including the HNSW algorithm. But, to the best of our knowledge, the proposed probabilities were never used directly. One reason for that is the fact that these probabilities depend on dimension. However, real-world datasets may have small and unknown intrinsic dimension while being embedded into a larger dimensional space. We noticed that it is possible to replace the distance between the elements with a rank-based distance. In terms of ranks, the probability of an edge to the kth neighbor should be proportional to 1 over k and this probability is dimension-independent. For uniform datasets, this reformulation is equivalent to the original one, but rank-based probabilities can be easily used for general datasets. However, as I already mentioned, the effect of long edges is important only if the dataset is sufficiently dense. This agrees with the recent empirical paper showing that the original hierarchical HNSW outperforms the bottom layer of this graph, called flat HNSW on the figure, only on dense datasets. Long edges help only on synthetic datasets of small dimension. On real datasets, there is no significant difference between these versions. Now let me explain the effect of the beam search. For uniform datasets, beam search allows us to reduce both time and space complexity. In this theorem, the constant L defines the number of neighbors in the graph, and the constant R defines the number of candidates maintained during the beam search. To get some intuition behind this result, let me show a simple example. Assume that we have a query queue, and we start the search at some candidate element C. When the current candidate is far away from the query, it is fairly easy to make greedy steps towards the query. However, at some point near the query, we may get stuck in a local optimum, so we cannot make any more greedy steps. Under some conditions, we can prove that the subgraph induced by several elements closest to the query is connected. In our case, if the subgraph induced by seven closest nodes is connected, and we use the beam search with seven candidates, then the search is guaranteed to finally cover all these seven points, including the nearest neighbor. At the end of the search, the algorithm returns the set of seven closest elements to the query. Let me empirically illustrate the theoretical results discussed before. Here, the synthetic datasets are uniformly distributed over a d-dimensional sphere for various values of d. Each plot shows the trade-off between the error rate and the number of distance calculations. Better algorithms are located closer to the bottom left corner. The blue curve, marked with circles, corresponds to the greedy search over simple nearest neighbor graphs. The orange curve with crosses shows the effect of long edges. As expected, long edges significantly help on dense datasets and have much smaller effect on sparse ones. The green curve with squares shows the effect of beam search. In contrast, beam search is extremely important for sparse datasets, while for dense ones, the best results can be achieved even with greedy search. Finally, let me discuss some practical insights that we've got based on the theoretical analysis. 
Recall that all theoretical guarantees hold only for the uniform distribution. We also know that the nearest neighbor search is easier for dense datasets. However, a general dataset can be mapped into a smaller dimensional one. And for this, we can use the loss function that combines the triplet loss to preserve the local geometry with the entropy loss to enforce the uniformity. Then, for each query, we map it to the lower dimensional space, perform beam search there, and evaluate the best candidates in the original space. It turns out that this approach significantly improves the quality of plain nearest neighbor graphs supplied with long edges. In particular, the obtained method becomes competitive with HNSW, although we do not use graph diversification. On this final slide, you can see the papers referenced in this talk. Thank you for your attention.